Hello? Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing phenomenally. I'm excited for this conversation. Great. Likewise. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to uh, to introduce yourself and give like... Uh, you wanted to talk about <clears throat> first um, the exchange I had with Angry Foreigner and then also we're going to from there go on to a generalized conversation about immigration in Sweden. So yeah, feel free to introduce yourself and take the uh, the opening um, points you want to lay out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, well, you can, uh, well, me, um, uh, I'll, I, can, I could call myself Robert. Um, I am, uh, prefer to be uh, mentioned, like, pretty be somewhat anonymous, but, you know, mm -hmm. you can, uh, I can, you can... You don't have to um, divulge any personal information whatsoever. No, no, of course, but you can, like, I'm a, I'm a 30 years old, I'm an uh, undergrad, so to say, um, and I enjoy discussing politics. Um, yes. So, yeah, that's about it. All right. So yeah. So feel free to start with your uh, your your critiques of my engagement with Angry Foreigner, and then from there we'll go on to immigration as a whole. Well, okay. So I want to say first, um, I think that a bit should have happened, nonetheless. Uh, mm -hmm. Like in any case, um, I don't necessarily think that it was the right call to not have a debate, like for anything, like uh, for anything, like it could be a good source of you know. Um, what would you say? A uh, good source of clout, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, mm -hmm. or a good source of you no know, popularity, having clicks, you know, for having like a real, real debate. And that goes for both sides. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and uh, I think that it uh, can really help to have uh, um, debates in the way um, uh, Destiny is doing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, so uh, my critique of this, like, I looked through your. Um, I looked through your video on your critiques against Anger Forender. Uh, the one that's called uh, Debunking Anger Forender's Parenthesis Awful Video on Crime in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found some like questionable things there, especially yeah. after I read your email. Mm -hmm. um, first, yeah, okay. First of which, um, well, first you have a, uh, like a, a bit exchange. You introduce yourself, you want to debate mm -hmm. all the stuff, and the answers. He lays out the card immediately, like his style is, and he says shit like, well, I think you, I think it was a trash video. I didn't like it at all. I, um, uh, I think you misrepresent me, mm -hmm. um, and continue with factual uh, faults. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go say in the, in the, in the email you answer. Um, There's one thing I want to point out um, here. Uh, you laid out a bunch of shit, um, but then you also say, that you were um, also exceedingly shareable in your video, mm -hmm. which I don't really agree with at all. I mean, um, for example, if you go to on 720 um, in, your vi in your video, mm -hmm. I think you said you're trying to insinuate. It sounds like you're trying to insinuate. Um, well, what does it? What? Um, so okay. hold on, let's let me pause for a second. Let me go to 720 and give that a little bit of a listen, and then from there. Um, I will uh I'll I'll continue speaking to you just so chat and myself are caught up. Yeah, sure. Is genetics is a difference that include, you know, um certain uh certain, you know, um physical um uh impairments for example or mental impairments. Um which uh could even be caused by social economics but that's besides the point. Anyway, social economics is the best predictor for crime that we have. But by him saying that, hey, social economics is a bad predictor of crime, he begs the question, so what is it, angry foreigner? Is it genetics? Is it biology? I don't know. I don't know what you think it is, angry foreigner, because he doesn't say it in this video. Probably, you know, I wonder why, but um, yeah. Yeah, okay, so this statement is made following uh, angry foreigner sort of ridiculing the notion mm -hmm. of analyzing crime through a socioeconomic lens. What's your issues with my, mm -hmm. my response? Oh no! I, my issue is just that uh, you seem to insinuating uh, that he 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 wants he um, like he seems to insinuating that okay, what can it? Uh, what is the causes of the of the 
of the of the increase in crime. Mm-hmm. It seems to be seen that he meant that the okay, maybe he thinks it's biology, maybe he thinks it's DNA, which is not really shareable if you ask me. Well, what else could it be? Except for socioeconomics. There is an exceedingly well, okay. small range of topics it could be, right? Um, yeah, sure, absolutely. But okay, so let me let me present you this. Why does that matter? Um, because the type of analysis that he's laying forth here, where he's dismissing the, you know, the most commonly agreed upon, you know, source for criminal activity, uh, socioeconomic condition, and instead saying that's not the case while not elaborating further and providing another, you know, possible solution, it seems to imply that, well, because he doesn't feel a need to elaborate on it, it's, it's clearly not that, but also that he doesn't necessarily want to elaborate on it. And uh, when you look at like, you know, what are generally spoken about as like, oh, what are the core causes for crime? You have the reasonable say- people saying socioeconomics and then the unreasonable people saying like genetics or, you know, whatever. Uh, so I don't see what else it could have been. So I just said, hey, you know, you don't talk about what it is. What else could it be? Are you implying it's biology or genetics? Because that seems to be the only other alternative to socioeconomics. So I'm curious is what I'm what I'm laying for there. Okay, so how is uh, cultural not an answer to that question? Okay, so where do you think culture comes from? Uh, culture comes from... Not sure, actually. I don't know what culture comes from. So... Uh, I just know that culture... Description of culture is basically behavior, traditions, music, art, etc. Mm-hmm. Among a, among a soci- in a society. Yep. Okay, so... Where do those types of I can I can lay out an argument because I do happen to know, you know, not exact and pinpoint like one cultural element to one mm-hmm. specific factor, but I do generally understand where culture arises from. And culture typically falls downstream from a whole range of different environmental factors and different mm-hmm. conditions that an individual or a group of people are placed in. So given, you know, like where they are, the people they engage with, the, for example, maybe like weather patterns, the general, you know, what's it called, access to media they might have, all of these things sort of like form and pressure and put, you know, different, yeah, put different pressures and inclinations on the formation of a culture as a whole. I don't believe that there is anything inherent within human beings or within specifically within different groups of human beings that predisposes certain humans over others to a certain type of culture. And as such, my prescription of that is that culture is basically made up of socioeconomics. That is where culture comes from. Culture comes from environmental influences and environmental pressures on human beings who sort of internalize all those and produce a culture from it. Okay, so you say culture inherits, like, comes from social economics yeah because where else would it come from i mean well, well, hold on so say, where else would it come from yeah where like, else would that doesn't come doesn't from? that doesn't really answer the question right well i provided a an, an answer for the question that seems to make sense depending on the like for example the the history you might have you know for your country the the weather patterns the media all these different things all together which are all parts of like, you know, societal influences, parts of what could be considered socioeconomics, when all these things are put together as an aggregate, they form a given culture. And that seems to be a good explanation to me. Um, that seems to be what makes sense. And the only alternative explanation to be, uh, uh, unless there's something I've never heard of in my entire life, would be an argument that, oh, well, culture is, is kind of inherent to different groups of people. Okay, so wait, let me get straight. So you are saying that, okay, so, but uh, why would a um, culture stem from so are you saying that it stems from exclusively socioeconomic issue or that's a part of it? Well, socioeconomics is like a wide, wide, wide range of things. And I don't know what else it could. I mean, if you discount, for example, the things like inherent to all humans, like, for example, the <laughs> fact that we can, you know, well, not every single individual human, but to humans at large, like, for example, the fact that we can speak, the fact that we can like move our bodies, the fact that we can sing, ta, 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 ta. like apart from those things, which, yeah, I mean, they are sort of like biological or, you know, genetic. I don't think there's any other factors, especially not factors that are, you know, inherent to certain groups over others, which can contributes to culture more than just socioeconomics. Okay. So, okay. So if I use the a cultural argument, you would imply that if you, using your logic, you would imply that, oh, that's a social economic uh, argument. Yep. 100%. Culture is a social economic pressure. Culture is part of social economy. Okay. All right. Um, but what's the, okay. So that's, that's your, uh, that's your impression. All right. Sure. Yeah, and that's I'm not what sure I'm if I agree. Video, right? I haven't I'm read the, like sources of co- like what culture might stem from or what that is. So I'm I'm not read up on that. 
Do you say. have any other ideas of what it might be? Uh, I won't say biology. You won't bait me to that shit. But uh, well, I'm however... just curious then, right? Because you came on here and, well, when we talked about this specific example, uh, you said it was uncharitable me to assume like that he might be implying a biological or cultural one. Or sorry, a biological yeah, of, or of course, one. Of course you implied that because, yeah. because, because I don't think he be? sees the, I don't think he sees uh, the, the definition of culture the same way you see the definition of culture. Like I don't see the definition of culture in like, well, it's a it's stem from social economic pressure. Like, okay, it's seems like you like it seems to me that you have uh, come up to this um, uh, come to this conclusion by you know analyzing like hard down the line of what can stem from like from you know from back when we were cave and stuff like that okay mm -hmm. As, and then the attribute all the social all the corresponding social economic um, issues we had back then and, and then a culture um, arises from that mm -hmm. am I Am I yeah, correct? Yeah, that? that absolutely makes sense. So are you then implying maybe that angry foreigner may not believe that culture is downstream from socioeconomics or? No, I just don't think that he, um, I don't think that, I don't think that neither him or I, I don't, I, I can't speak for him. I can't mm -hmm. speak for him, really not. I do, I can just say what I think. I think that um, uh, that's a little bit too um, over analysis on my part. Um, like for for me, like um, for me, culture that it, like that seems to me to be more of a um, more of a description rather than a cause, because like, like uh, social economic issues seems to be um, the the cause of something that happened, and culture seems to be like description of that cause. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, the interplay sense. with them are, they're very reciprocal, right? Culture influences socioeconomics and socioeconomics influences culture. There is a okay, very yes. complex relationship between the two, but, you know, both of them fundamentally <laughs> have to do with and stem from socioeconomics. And when he dismisses socioeconomics, then I'm left to answer, well, what else is there? What else are you implying? What other possible causes for, in this case, criminal activity, could you believe that, uh, that, that this stems from? Okay, but let me ask you this. Do you think a normal person would uh, like if you sit down with a normal person okay. and if you ask them like okay, what is what is uh, what's the social economics and what is uh, and what is uh, culture? Do you think we would get the same answer from like that random person or from, like a like a um, set of persons? Well, probably not. Some people would be wrong and some people would be correct. Okay, so you you think that people who doesn't give the same description to culture as mm -hmm. to do to social economics are wrong per definition. Um, I think people that believe that culture doesn't stem from social economics, then they are pretty much wrong. Yeah, I don't. There is no, no other. Not on stem, but give the, give similar description. Um, right. Okay. Because okay. So if you if I if I'm to give you uh, like uh, ignoring uh, of how uh, like a dictionary define social economics or define culture, how would you define? Like in the shortest way possible, those two um, different words, social economics and culture. How would you define them in that case? Well, what would be the, the the difference between them? Yeah, so social economics would just be the large array of different social and economic influencers, uh, incentives, pressures that you know we experience within our you know day to day lives, or that exist within a world, within a civilization, within a society, or whatever. The social and economic pressures, incentives, yada yada yada. That's what I would define social economics as. What I would define culture as is general attitudes held by a you know the majority or a select sample of individuals given a you know certain geographical location, given a certain um, you know like. Um, maybe like fan base, given a certain interest group, given a certain, you know, any really thing, just general attitudes and values that are shared among a population. Mm, okay. So, and, okay. Huh. Yeah, that seems, uh, well, a little bit weird to me. I don't think about that, about that for a little bit. It mm -hmm. seems weird to me. Okay, so how do you fit, how do you fit, um, can you fit, for example, the subculture in your description of uh, social economic issues? I mean, yeah, definitely. Like subculture, what you mean by that is just like a, basically like a, a smaller like variant like or strain of culture. Like gamers or... Yeah, fucking, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, gamers, the, the existence of gamers as a subculture stems from the socioeconomic conditions of us having access to machines that can run these, you know, 
they can put pixels on our screen that create an interactive experience for people to enjoy. Um, and, you know, the internet probably has a pretty big part of gamer culture. That's another, you know, social pressure, another social incentive that exists, which encourages the creation of a given subculture um, based around this pastime, based around this hobby of playing video games. Okay, so when uh, people do analysis of uh, uh, social economics issue, um, mm -hmm. What does that analysis so does that analysis stem from like the definition that you um that you uh, describe yeah so, so for example like mm -hmm. you you showed like uh oh actually you didn't show an article but if you have an article you still showed like an abstract of an article mm -hmm. uh looks so in that article for example uh does that article take take into respect all of those factors yeah, so, 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 so socioeconomics is an incredibly broad term. Incredibly, incredibly broad. It can encompass pretty much a, like, not an infinite... Well, yeah, perpetually growing <laughs> amount of things, right? It is extraordinarily broad. Um, right. It's basically every single environmental influence possible. And that's a large part of the reason why I took such a disagreement with Angry Foreigner when he said no to socioeconomics, because that's there is a whole bunch of different things included in that. So either he is insinuating a, you know, a more like biological essentialist answer to it, or he's just miseducated on what socioeconomics means. In both cases, he would be incorrect. Um, but uh, but in regards to, yeah, I mean, generally within the within academia, um, you will have a, a general congruency in what is defined as, as socioeconomics. And because the label is so broad, it's it's pretty hard to fuck up a definition of something that is like extremely broad as, as socioeconomics and different sort of studies study socioeconomics. But you will oftentimes not get a just a study that says, you know, socioeconomics says this or whatever you most studies they, they they look at specific aspects of socioeconomic conditions so for example if you're looking at sentencing disparities for example uh then mm -hmm. the socioeconomic conditions you would analyze would be okay let's look at poverty let's look to access to lawyers let's look to courtroom behavior let's look at criminal record da, da, da. those are the socioeconomic conditions you would you would look at you wouldn't look at like the socioeconomic conditions of the most trending sneakers at the moment you know all right right um, yeah yeah, okay, okay. So, uh, all right. Well, okay, so in that case, well, then it seems to become, like, the social economics, like, definition seems to become a little bit redundant. Well, not necessarily. Discussion. It's an important, uh, it's an important differentiation from genetics or from, like, inherent biology. And that's the value it serves in the discussion of, you know, causes of criminality. Because, yeah, the, the, the two things tend to stem from like socioeconomics or from genetics or culture and there is a lot of interplay between the two it's not as cut and dry as i'm making it out to be but nevertheless uh if you dismiss socioeconomics then there is you you, you would be wrong you know any which way you slice it um but yeah that, right. that's the main purpose of of using the term socioeconomics in regards to causation of criminal behavior as a contrast to an inherent or biological essentialist explanation all right okay well um hmm. Right. Well, okay. That seems to it seems to hold up when if you if you said it that if you put it that way. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um. Uh, okay. So in that case, I would like to give it get back to. Um, like uh, okay. So but no, wait. Let, let me just um. I I come off something else. So you can't. I'm not saying I I think that you can't. But mm -hmm. you so you say that you absolutely cannot. Um. Uh draw social economics you, you can't um sue in dna or biology in a social economic issue like that is not that is it doesn't it's not, it's not really a possibility it's, in it's conceptually possible yeah i mean well okay okay i see what you mean by the definition well that would have to be if you know we we exhibit a uh if we can demonstrate that certain you know genetic traits or whatever predisposes individuals of certain groups over others to engage in behaviors which form the overall culture or which form and create a different other you know like conditions so let's say there was a a gene that overall just made like humans have just an innate desire to like jump a lot 
And yeah. from that, you might see, you know, oh, we don't have payments anymore. We just have like jumping blocks or whatever that people jump in between or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, right. it's, it's conceptually possible. But for that to be, you know, for that to be demonstrated, for that to be a, uh, a valid explanation, you would have to demonstrate that causal link. You would have to demonstrate that there is something genetic about, in this case, certain groups of people over others that um, has, uh, has, has, you know, caused this different... Uh, social economic, this different culture, this different whatever that predisposes them to higher crime rates. And that link, that causal link, and I've done a lot of reading on this because I debated uh, really prominent race realists on this, which are, yeah, basically people that believe there's different genetic differences, significant ones between like white and black people or whatever. And there is, there doesn't seem to be any evidence um, for that uh, at all at the moment. And yeah, that's, that's why, that's, uh, that's why I have the opinion that I have on that. Okay. But you okay, so you could in theory see in uh, biology and social economics. I mean, yeah, definitely. All right, okay. Hmm. All right, but uh, anyway, back to uh, the original point I was having. Mm -hmm. um, you seems to you seems to demand next. Okay, so you seem that it it was not. Um, uh, you, that's a response to him that the social economics was bogus. I don't think it's bogus. I think it's a, it's a it's a it's a fine explanation for. Um, for uh, explanation of crime, you mm -hmm. know. Um, however, I am very, um, I'm very hesitant to um, uh, consent to the idea that, um, like everyday people, if you ask some random person on the on the on the street, including angry foreigner, mm -hmm. that he would distinguish, um, that he wouldn't distinguish culture and and uh, social economics on the level that you seems to do. Yeah, I mean, it, it very much is possible for it to be the case that he doesn't distinguish between the two, but the thing is, or that he does distinguish between the two in a right. way that they are completely different things. And if you right. were to do that, just like any other person on the street who were to do that, they would be wrong. Okay, all right. So, okay, okay, so they, they, they're wrong about that. So, uh, so how does that make... Okay, so, okay, so, so... But um, so why? So all right, okay, yeah, sure. Hmm. Um, if it comes if it comes to that, I mean, okay, so you you basically you you disagree on the fundamental level. Is that how I was supposed to? I mean, um, yeah, because the initial point you made was that I was uncharitable by implying that or by, you know, making the statement that he may be implying a biological or a genetic explanation to this. And based on the way I understand socioeconomics and the way I understand that culture fits underneath the umbrella of socioeconomics, that seemed to be a reasonable extrapolation. But I did leave room within my statement for the possibility of him being like, oh shit, I just, I didn't like conceptualize the fact that culture and socioeconomics fall under the same umbrella, which is why I asked, I didn't say, so what he's implying here is he's implying a biological or genetic one. What I said that, okay, so what are you implying here? Angry foreigner, are you implying a biological or genetic one? So it leaves room there for him to, you know, potentially answer the question and to be like, well, no, I was just incorrect about this in the conceptualization of the terms we're using here. Um, so I'm not like railroading him into it, even though I would, you know, it, it wouldn't it be. It kind of seems like that. It's yeah. it's kind of like I don't know, man. It, it seems like that to me, a little bit, if not by a lot, but by mm -hmm. a little bit for sure. Yeah, and and on top of that, the reasons why I yeah, even though it leaves like possible deniability, it, it, it's it fairly you know, um, it, it's a fairly strong implication that he may believe those things. And mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. the you know like um, the type of content he makes generally, the type of like channels he engages with, the type of people he talks to, the type of people he say he looks up to, and just the general tone of his content in which oftentimes feed right into the narrative of far right wing groups, then to me, it seems extraordinarily likely that either A, that's what he's signaling, or B, that's the effect it's having on the audience, on the people that are watching his videos. And to me, what he believes in his head isn't very important, but what he may signal, what beliefs he may inspire within his audience based on that statement is what matters. And I believe that there are a significant amount of people that would read that statement coming from him as, you know, oh, oh, he, he, he's in support of a like biological or genetic explanation. All right. Okay, sure. Um, have you seen him debating Christopher Dolny? Is that the ethnostator? Yeah. 
Uh, I've not I think so. If it matters, I didn't, I didn't uh, uh, follow the link in the email, but mm -hmm. uh, I know of about, I know about the date they have have with the Christopher Don. I don't know if that was the debate link, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I have not seen that debate with him. No, I have not. And a few caveats to that. Number one, it is entirely possible to be far right without being an ethnostater. Number two, it is possible for people that are even like different types of ethnostaters, uh, more like implicit ones, more explicit ones to have disagreements. And number three, having that conversation doesn't impact the way that the general uh, gist of his content and the effect that has on his audience members and that effect being one of, you know, far right tendencies. Because I recall in that video, he completely uh, disregarded the biological uh, claims of the far right, mm -hmm. as I would put it. Yep. So I don't know what you think he gets that gets that stuff from. Is well, there any possible. other good example that you have? Uh, another good example of what? Or oh, that he that he seems to be implying the biological aspect, because um, I, I I really can't recall anything of that. Like there must there must be like okay, so yeah, I, I mean admit it's, it's entirely in possible. The last in this is the second to last video. I mm -hmm. admit it was a little bit of that stuff. Yeah, I'm that, that was the one for the people watching. That was the one on the, you know, the, the flag in the four, you know, ethnic minority yeah. space. Um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, there's that. But, you know, on top of that, even, you know, even if, you know, I believe that this is probably a generalized trend. I don't watch a lot of Angry Foreigner because, frankly, I don't, uh, I, find, <laughs> I find it difficult to uh, to, to watch them. Um, just, just generally, it's not my type of uh, content mm -hmm. directly. So most of the stuff I've watched from his is stuff I've gone over on stream. Um, but even if he doesn't signal this any further in other videos, which I am willing to bet that he probably does, um, the, it, it, the, the thing I'm most concerned on is the implication it has towards his audience and uh, and the way that his audience might, you know, interpret the things he's saying and the effect and the way he's sort of like pushing his audience's uh, political predilections. Okay, so you haven't watched very much on for and you still you want to imply that it seems to be signaling for a biological aspect. Is that something I'm supposed to understand? I mean, within that video that I was going through, it yeah. certainly seemed like that could be a possible implication of what he was saying. Um, although it, I, sure. if I if I had to like if I had to one hundred percent guess what he himself like believes, it would probably be that he is he's incorrect or he's he misunderstands the uh, the connection between you know socioeconomics and culture. That would probably be my best guess as to what he himself believes. But frankly, I'm not very concerned on what he himself believes. I'm more worried about what the people watching him may extrapolate from his statement and what ideas that might, you know, um, yeah, what ideas that might spawn within the people that watch his content. All right, cool. So, um, um, so um, why does it matter on what the cause is if your solution is to stop immigration? Um, because that's the wrong solution. Um, that's why analyzing the correct cause is important because unless you before you recognize the cause There's no way to talk about the correct solutions if you believe the cause for example is um, Is something that is inherent something that is biological something that is genetic Then the only possible solution is just get us as far away as possible from these people if you believe that the solution is oh, Sorry that the cause is something socioeconomic then the correct solution would be to form the socioeconomic condition around people to you know prevent and to break the causal link that is creating this given problem in this case the problem of criminality uh, okay but as as of this as of this uh, at in the in the case of 2014 15 around those times mm -hmm. um the culture or the social economic condition let's skip culture immediately and mm -hmm. just go by your definition then mm -hmm. the social economic conditions of um let's say for example middle east what people come from was uh, primarily Syria, mm -hmm. for example, um, and uh, and and comparable to Sweden. And uh, well, we didn't we didn't actually take in as many Syrians as people think we did. We did take in a lot of like immigrants from nearby groups, but uh, that's just like a little thing. I can you you, you weren't claiming a percentage, so I'm not gonna you know say no, that no, you were no. wrong or whatever. But but yeah, th that's one of the nations, sure. Um, but there yeah, there are plenty of other nations as well that we took immigrants from. Yeah, keep going. Okay, so but so at the time that that migration happened, there was, mm -hmm. would you say that there was a different social economic condition from that nation and from. Sweden. Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. Okay, so if you take in people with different 
uh, social economic conditions mm -hmm. that are more prevalent to crime, mm -hmm. uh, why is it not a reasonable solution to temporarily uh, stop immigration? Because they don't bring the socioeconomic conditions with them necessarily. So what the correct thing to do then is to, you know, I hate the term bring in because it, it's, you know, it sounds like we're like importing them, like we're shipping them over here. But the correct answer is when these people come to Sweden is to provide them or to, you know, um, have them enter an environment of good socioeconomic conditions so that they're, you know, like, like any human being, every human being is a product of their environment so that their, you know, their, their behaviors, their attitudes, their values or whatever is shaped by the current socioeconomic condition. Um, because right. it's, it's not permanent. It's not like you just, you just like absorb, you know, the, the culture or whatever from where you're born. And then that's like, like stuck with you forever, really. Um, depending on, on, on changes. Yeah. If, if you provide them with a, with a better environment, with a better socioeconomic condition than any harmful or any um, any you know behaviors that we find uh, that we find undesirable um, that you know are more prevalent within those regions of the world we can weave them out through improving you know just general conditions here in Sweden. So why is it uh, still valid to import uh, or to accept migrants from other countries when we don't have these conditions in Sweden? Um, so we haven't accepted a you know we have accepted exceedingly exceedingly few people since 2015 through our borders. Yeah, yeah sure, but still, like this mm -hmm. question is still valid. Yep. Yeah, I mean, what I would like recognize is that um, if I were to run a utilitarian calculus right now of the effects on the 2015 immigration wave on Sweden, I would personally say that okay, the overall effects we had in providing these people a you know like a place to stay. Uh, to, you know, like the moral good that was provided from there and potential benefits down the line would outweigh the negatives they were feeling right now in Sweden. Although I would much prefer it if there weren't any negatives really. And I am less concerned in discussing whether or not we took in, you know, a good amount of immigrants in 2015 as I am in discussing, okay, we are here today. What do we do about it? More solution oriented rather than, you know, um, talking about the uh, yeah about issues within the the past. That's that's generally my my attitude towards it. Mm, okay, um, so I mean it's it's unimaginable for you to temporarily stop immigration. In order I mean to... we we have like you know like practically stopped immigration for like four years now. We have received exceedingly few immigrants for the past few years, and that. The issue I see yeah, with but, the, yes, no, right, but, uh, yeah, but uh, bringing in more doesn't really help the problem, right? As, as you also recognize, since you seem to be, uh, since you want to solve the problem as of right now, mm -hmm. I mean, bring it. Okay, so let's see what, like, so, so it seems that um, wanting to solve the problem doesn't really help when you are just bring just spewing on the uh, the cauldron, you know. I'm a bit confused as to exactly what you're saying. I think the primary okay, focus so, right okay, now so for why, Sweden why should be... It, why does it help to accept... Okay, we see them with few. That's that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, that's okay. And um, uh, that, I mean, that's that's okay. Like, it's fine that we have, like, very few immigrants. Um, but why... Uh, okay, but why is it even acceptable to bring in uh, any, any immigrants at all from these countries? Um, because when we're... we have, uh, when we clearly have too many to take care of all of them. Well, the issue isn't that we we have too many to take care of them. The issue is that we don't have we not not that we don't have like it's impossible for us to obtain these, but through the political actions over the past few decades, we have either deconstructed or failed to construct necessary feasible infrastructural and general economic policies which would have allowed us to have a general infrastructure and societal systems to be able to accept the amount of immigrants we took in 2015 with ease and capitalize on the benefits from immigration while mitigating practically all of the negatives okay so has do you think that this uh this migration was predictable in uh, for like this decennia earlier um what do you mean by predictable that there would be like some form of mass migration or yeah because it seems like if someone brought up like yeah we need to reinforce our infrastructure or our welfare in order to account for all these migrants gonna mm -hmm. come here in like 10 years for example i mean i certainly believe look it, i will by no means and this is this is typically a trend i often see with uh 
with, with often, um, you know, yeah, people from from angry foreigner camp and other general, like like even centrist and right wing people here in Sweden. Uh, I will by no means defend the competency and the action of the Swedish government. You know, in the decades preceding the uh, the the migrant crisis, absolutely not. I think that every single like government leading up to that point why they may have done you know good in certain different departments when it came to them you know defending or building up general welfare and infrastructure systems they all have done horribly most you know a great example of this is for example the absolute gutting of our educational systems that took place in the 90s which if yeah. that was in place today we would be in a so much so much better position both in regards to integration and just education as a whole um <laughs> So yeah, I mean, definitely, people should have done a lot, lot more uh, in order. Yeah, to but account for the for the mass amount of immigration that come. I mean, what you're talking about here is the gutting. Okay, so let's let's say, for example, that school, the gutting of the school. Let's say that wouldn't have happened. Would it still, would that still non gutting of, of education would have counted for the all the migrants that came here? Uh, do I believe the gutting of the systems would have... Like, I Well, I believe that both the gutting of the systems was part of the bad thing and the general like lack of certain reforms that we should have done in Sweden like decades ago, which would have been good. Like, for example, the legalization of marijuana um, are things that would have just put Sweden in generally better position and put it in a better position when it comes to, uh, when it comes to accepting migrants in Sweden. Okay, so... But... Um... So, so you, so, yeah, better conditions, sure, but account for all the migrants. What do you mean by account for all the migrants? Yeah, b because you know, you, um, you seem to be saying that if we had done right, uh, if we had set the right policies, we could actually have accounted for all the migrants, for all the immigration that happened during fourteen fifteen. Mm -hmm. Is that your claim? Uh, I think that, yeah, I think if we, if we had had more competent government uh, leadership, if we would have had just better policy, better politics in general in this country over the past few decades, we would absolutely be in a far, 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 far better position than we are today, especially in regards to integration. Absolutely. And that's without accounting for that uh, at this massive amount of immigration. Even if we would have taken in, like if we had had a competent government, for the decades leading up to 2015, I believe that we would have handled the 2015 migrant crisis in the numbers that we took in, in a really, really good way. I mean, we see other countries like, for example, Germany, they have done a phenomenal job with their integration and with their handling of the 2015 economic crisis. They have done spectacularly. Um, and in large part, this is because they had more competent leadership, they had better infrastructure in place, they had better policies in place. And as a result of that, they did they did wonderfully. Uh, and it's something I wish that Sweden would have been able to do as well. So did they do optimally with the amounts of, uh, uh, like for the, the, like the rape scandal in Cologne, for example? Was that a tremendous job, do you think? Wait, one more time, sorry. Like the, the rape scandal that happened in Cologne in Germany. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. When I talk about the success of a given nation based on, you know, what like large scale issues, like, for example, a migrant crisis, I tend to prefer to look at like larger, you know, statistical interpretations of what went right instead of like specific given scandals. And what we do see is that things like, for example, the crime rates among immigrant populations are the same or sometimes even lower than the native born population when it comes to their employment rate. It's great, you know, like equal um, to the native born population, no real like significant significance in between there. Um, like th those are types of metrics I prefer to look at when it comes to ascertaining the success of a given government in handling a crisis instead of pointing out specific specific, you know, like instances of something going wrong. Okay, so uh, uh, considering the, the current state and the, okay, let's considering this current state, why would, why is still more migration, um, or still more migration to Sweden and none um, deportation of current migrants uh, a bad thing when we don't have a system to assimilate current migrants? Okay, so this is a good question. Uh, and yeah, I, I'd love to talk about why deportations is a bad idea. Um, first thing you, you said at the end that we're, we keep receiving a lot of immigrants. We, we, we haven't. I, I've said this a couple of times before. We've you had, said like, it was lower. It was very it was, low. It was dramatically lower. I can send you a, a graph right now. Yeah, okay. After. So that's, that's fine. It's dramatically yeah, low, okay. but it's zero. It's non-zero. Oh, it's yeah. Non -zero. But a lot of these immigrants aren't like from like, you know, 
the Middle East or from Africa, whatever. A lot of them are just people migrating from around Europe. Those are also counted within immigration. The Mena, the, but they're still coming from the MENA countries. Well, extremely few of them, like extremely, extraordinarily few. Um, but yeah, I, sure. but that's still uh, like a number of people, you know? I mean, yeah, sure. But if we're talking about the numbers of like, you know, like very small numbers, then I don't believe that the like utility we're going to uh, to you know produce upon the world to produce upon those people by bringing them in is going to be outweighed by the negatives caused by those given small amounts of people but i'm going to get to your question with with deportations and why that's a bad idea so number one um deportations uh this probably isn't gonna like land very well with a lot of people but i just want to lay through all the arguments and then we can go through uh, the most effective ones number one i think it's it's just morally like abhorrent i don't believe that we should be deporting um people back to countries which they've gone through a lot of you know like risks and struggles and dangers in order to come there uh, where they're going to be far 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 worse off than they you know could ever be in sweden that's point number one point number two there is an untapped potential within the new population group in sweden that we haven't been able to tap into due to the lack of infrastructure systems which if right now we took strong action to address sweden would see a tremendous progress when it comes to the labor market, when it comes to the economy, for example. Those are another two things. Number three, deportations are very, very, very expensive and are very, very logistically complex and intense. And the amount of money that we would spend on deportations would be far, far, far better spent on improving the infrastructure and social systems, uh, which will also allow us to capitalize on the benefits that I uh, mentioned previously. On top of that, Sweden certainly must have a lot of you know immigrants and a lot of young people because we're currently seeing a situation in which a lot of people are moving into retirement compared to moving within the workforce and we are simply not going to have enough people to be able to produce tax revenue and to be able to support the elders in sweden um the people that are going to be living on pensions unless we see a like massive amount of like an infusion of labor force into sweden as a whole this has been you know talked about in in government by studies by these you know healthcare organizations within sweden the different landsting and stuff like that that's also something that we definitely need to address and then finally it just it doesn't address the root cause of these issues which if they were addressed not only wouldn't we see issues with immigration that we see right now but just sweden as a whole even for natives would be so 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 much better off um so those are my five reasons why i believe deportations is a really bad idea and why i believe rather in good reform in order to improve the uh the infrastructure and the uh the general uh, economic and social policies we have in sweden okay so i mean uh so deportation doesn't necessarily have to mean like you actually have to ship them back, right? It just has to mean like withdrawal of residency, right? Okay, well, then there are two possible consequences from this, right? Consequence number one, they are forced to leave, which practically has the same consequence as deporting them. So in that case, it's a non sequitur. Point number two, we withdraw their visas and they just they just overstay them. And they just stay here in Sweden. And because of that, we might have a high portion of like illegal immigrants, which is certainly not a good thing. And will just exacerbate a lot of the issues we see right now when it comes to integration, the formation of ghettos and all these other things. So even if we just report their visas, that would either have just like the same effect morally as deporting them or would just make a bunch of the issues like far, far, far worse for Sweden and for the immigrants. Yeah, but it won't cost anything and the tax money to actually deport them, right? um yeah i mean sure it would mitigate well that depends okay, that depends are, right? because well that's one of the aspects but it depends because some people would probably overstay their visas probably like if we just like mass revoked all the like the citizenship permits for a lot of these people here um then that would still bring like dramatic issues of people like staying here in sweden and illegal immigrants typically aren't good on a fiscal basis on a, the basis of you know like generating tax revenue and stuff like that uh they aren't typically a good thing they're good economically sure they would be better economically if they were legal um but they're typically just like a fiscal drain so we'll have like an economic drain anyway there but yeah i mean that that's one other way to solve this which is also has its other like you know shitty effects of increasing the amount of illegal migrants here in sweden but yeah i suppose we would cut down on some of the cost sure but it would bring just a bunch of other negative problems with it so i don't think there's a unreasonable idea to just withdraw the residency uh in due to um in due to what's it called um uh 
due to due to uh, people being refugees and just uh, a reinstate the residency due to labor force i think that's completely reasonable but then you also have to do that so that people who doesn't want to work doesn't stay here that's my point isn't that okay isn't that do you think that people that? don't want to work that's my question uh, I'm not sure, but it doesn't seem to be working a lot if you look at the statistics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you believe that the reason why a lot of people may not be working could be because of things like, for example, could be labor market discrimination, could be the fact that criminal alternatives to generating money are more like lucrative, could be due to the fact that these people just like live in communities and in districts in which the job opportunities are completely dog shit and they live in, you know, like a really poor like housing stuff and stuff like that. Or do you just believe that these people just don't want to work? Which one of the two do you think is more likely? uh well i okay so obviously people uh who doesn't uh if labor isn't required then mm -hmm. these people obviously cannot work right if labor isn't as you said as you said correctly if you if, if labor opportunities isn't available mm -hmm. the people aren't uh, aren't going to have any job right obviously yeah exactly so what would be the need for having these people in the nation if the labor isn't required? Though? Well, because if you had a system in which you had good, proper, pragmatic policies in place, what you could do then is you would prevent the formation of zones of people that are in poor socioeconomic condition that are undesirable or that are, un, what's it called, unlucrative um, for businesses to settle down and start making firms. And if you had good policies that would, for example, allow, you know, migrant groups to not just like settle in really poor communities that would allow them to like really move about Sweden to have a bit like larger of a spread there to prevent the formation of ghettos, to make criminal yeah, behavior less lucrative. So you can incentivize immigrants to start, you know, creating businesses. Um, if you were to do all of these things, then you would see more job opportunities spring up and you would see a better balance of it across Sweden as a whole in a way that this labor is absolutely necessary. And we already see that this labor is necessary in Sweden. When it came to, for example, the welfare thing I was talking about, we need 500,000 new people to work within the welfare in Sweden by, I'm going to check exactly what year it was. I have the citation here. Um, uh, but, you know, in just a... Uh, in just a few years and we're just simply not going to get that like labor uh if we you know like deport or revoke the citizenship for these people and the reason why they can't take those jobs right now is in large part because those jobs don't exist within the poor communities that they're at yeah right um yeah so i still don't see the problem because if you actually needed the labor force within these uh, institutions that you're saying we could just we uh, like we could just um adjust our policies to uh let let people actually uh, the people who aren't in these conditions from the beginning work there so we don't actually so i don't see how we need to you know uh lift up the uh the you know the migrants from the social economic zones that you describe them mm -hmm. because they don't have the opportunity from the beginning so if you could just well, uh, we could give them the opportunity to do so well that would cost tax money yeah, sure. I mean, we've had like budget budget of a scot like for the past like three years preceding the um, what's it called the like yeah, the yeah, coronavirus. That, and on top of that, we also point. know that like certain investments and certain policies, especially these types of policies that I'm talking about right now, is going to be a, like a, literally just like a short term investment for a long time economic boom when it comes to, for example, like economic activity and tax revenue in the economic stimulus that these policies will bring uh, in Sweden as a whole. But that's hardly the point. So we could still bring in Im immigrants from other countries. Mm -hmm. I just, I just understand why we would prefer them from people who are in a in a, in a situation where they cannot even get 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 into the labor market to begin with. Uh, so your argument is basically like kick out the current immigrants and then just try to encourage immigrants from other like better conditions to come here and work those jobs instead. Yeah, who actually can take the job as it is right now? Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, because yeah. <laughs> Okay, so my answer to this is that, number one, this still doesn't like address like severe holes and flaws we have within Swedish infrastructure. But on top of that, you're not going to have yeah, but you people, can, okay, but so you're, you're not going to have people from developing nations. The infrastructure problem without uh, and still addressing. But if we're going to solve the infrastructure problem, then why would we want to get rid of the immigrants? Because if we have the immigrants here, when we fix the infrastructure problem, then we're going to get like even more benefits. Why would we? Why would we like? 
cut off but potential benefits. You said it yourself. You still have to make an investment, and we should you don't have to do. We should make that investment anyway, regardless of whether or not we have immigrants here or not. What do you, what do you mean regardless? So it. Uh, so we should we should nevertheless make the investments in things like, for example, building up Arbets for Medlingen, in things like, for example, reforming our educational system, in, for example, providing good public affordable housing across the entirety of Sweden, um, in, for example, like looking into things like legalizing cannabis. These are all reforms that I would recommend as for Sweden as a whole, um, beyond also improving things like integration. Like we should do both. And on top of that, you're not going to find people that are well educated from developed nations being like, ah, yes, I want to go work in in the welfare sector of Sweden. We have we don't have great, you know, general like pay and like a lot of our welfare work workers are overworked. And we know this because there is a lack of, you know, like people within these jobs. I highly doubt you're going to be able to like pull in that amount of quantity of labor that we need within our welfare sectors um, through, you know, trying to encourage people from uh, other, like, more developed countries to come here. That just seems incredibly unfeasible to me. That people want to come here to work? Uh, the in... people want to come, that, like, like, pe like numbers of, like, 500,000 people want to come here from developed nations and pay that upfront cost to work in industries that already don't really, like, pay that well and that have really long hours and there are, like, rough jobs. Like, working within welfare is pretty difficult. Yeah, I, I yeah, so, you know, um, yeah, I don't really see how that's a problem at all. I, I, I really think that, I mean, do, a lot do, of these... Do you really believe that we will be... Okay, hold on, I'm going to find the exact number here. Um, that I'm I'm referring to, um, so that I can really like put it's somewhere sometime in the the, the 2020s to 2029, um, where we will need to have a 500,000 like person infusion to the labor force. Do you generally like even if we go by 2029, do you generally yeah. think that we in Sweden will be able to like attract 500,000 qualified workers from other developed nations to work within industries that aren't really that like desirable and aren't really that you know like. I don't really have that good pay and stuff like that that we do right now here in Sweden. Do, do you, you really that, believe that, that's feasible? You think that that competence could stem from the population that we currently have here? Oh, definitely, one hundred percent. Oh, I I really doubt that. I really what, doubt do, that. Do you think that the like immigrants just aren't like couldn't be trained to be competent enough to do it? Oh yeah, for sure. I sure I surely think they could be trained. I think that just a, just a massive investment that we have to do to uh, achieve that is just unfeasible in terms of. Wait, tax no, we we definitely have the tax money to do. It. We've had budget was cut for like three years preceding the coronavirus pandemic. We we have the money to do it. And on top of that, even if we go on like a short term like loss <laughs> when it comes to these making these investments, they this will be paid like you know paid back in the future like tenfold when it comes to yeah, the economic it, stimulus yeah, it's, it's going to bring to Sweden. It's still possible to, it's still possible to um, take in migrants from other nations that are willing to but do the job. But why would we do it? It's just, it's just harder why, to do. Why? What do you mean why? We're saving tax money. Holy shit. But it's not feasible. You're not going to be able to attract 500,000 like well-educated people from developed nations to come within, wait, wait, like, to work within a pretty poor sector. Sorry? No, well, but we can make them well educated. Exactly, by doing investment that costs tax money, right? Okay, you're going in circles. Do you realize what you're doing here? You're saying that, okay, we are going to be able to uh, to attract other people. And then I say, well, no, we're not going to be able to do it because we're not going to be able to bring in trade amount of people. Oh, that's going to be a tax money infusion. Like, yeah, of course, we're going to have to take that, make that infusion in order no, no, to no, be no, able no, to no, train no, the population. No, no. I, they I, say, I, no, I, we shouldn't I, make the infusion. We should just take people in. You're just going in circles here. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that you have to make a tax, tax money infusion in order to actually take out foreign, foreign immigrants that actually can do the job. I really doubt that you can do that. I no, think no, that exactly. We, we, because we're not going to be able to. There, there's, there. It's incredibly difficult to create those types of incentives for that amount of people to move here. And on top of that, there are enough reasons already for us to invest in these type of programs. There's already enough reasons for us to invest in our educational systems within our housing systems. There's already reasons to do this. Yeah, but these are all. All these are uh, these these investments are always going to be proportional to the amount of people that you want to educate, right? somewhat but the more but it like uh, well, it depends yeah. well no not really because let's say for example well, you have, really yeah let's say you have a country with like one person okay and no let's say okay let's say like a couple thousand people uh just right. like spread out across the entirety of sweden okay right you will need and you decide to reform educational system for sweden with all these people in here what that will right. be is that per capita per person the amount of money being used to reform schools all around sweden with a lower population is going to be higher 
Now, let's say you had a higher population in Sweden. Let's say you had 10 times the amount of population. The cost of reforming all the educational facilities then would not be as high per capita per individual within the nation as it is in the situation where you have less people on average per capita. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, so if anything... The fact that we have more people is going to give us more bang for a buck because the amount of like be positive benefits we're going to get from making these reforms to our educational system is going to benefit both native-born Swedes and also immigrant groups. While if we just make the investment without the immigrant groups, it's just going to, you know, uh, affect native groups, and we're just not going to get the benefit of educating all those migrants. Yeah, obviously, but it's still going to be a difference in terms of uh, amount of people you're educating. Right? Yeah, but it's going to be more cost efficient. Of course, it's going to be more cost efficient. So, then what's your disagree? Yeah, you, you, you yeah, said that the cost is going to be worse with migrants. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't really exclude the investment we need to make, right? The no, but investment. we need to. We should make that investment anyway, regardless of if we have migrants or not. Well, we should make an extra effort to educate people that we uh, to educate people that we wouldn't have here. What do you mean that we wouldn't have here? Okay, so you, you say that we should make those investments regardless if we have immigrants or not, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. 2028 so, was the date, by the way. You know, it, with, by 2028, we need 500,000 more people commencing work in the welfare sector, which... Yeah, sure, I can boy. see that, sure, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so uh, um, so that, that, that is still an investment of money that we need to make, right? So, so, so it's still it's still tax money that you're. Yeah, that but you're it's a paying. good investment. It will pay out in the future. Okay, I don't doubt that it might be a good investment, but mm -hmm. I don't see how taking in uh, that in that case taking uh, uh, like um, accepting uh, migrants from from. And now other... we're switching to a different argument. Do you realize how you're switching to a different argument now? How, how am I switching? First, to your argument was it's not a good like we shouldn't spend this money on reforming this with the current immigrants we have here, and now you've changed to we shouldn't take in any more immigrants, which are two different arguments. No, wait, wait. I I'm not inherently against like uh, like uh, uh, like uh, hard against immigration. I'm just hard against immigration from uh, countries that you put it are in low socio socioeconomic conditions. But if we can handle it, then what's the issue with that? I don't see how we can handle it with the states. We that absolutely that could. We definitely have the money and the reforms we need to make are relatively simple. The reforms we need to make, I have a document on this. Yeah, sure. Are... Yeah, sure. But that is still investment of money that we need to yeah, make. It's an investment. It's a cost in the short term for a long term great benefit. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Both morally, yes. both economically and on other, on other parts, right? What, okay, what else? Should, what, what, where else is the money better spent? Um, how about education? General welfare for, for uh, people who are already living in Sweden? Great, you've That's... already listed two policies that I have proposed in order to help integration. Yeah, right, but uh, in your policies, that takes account for, for, for the extra amount of people that come from uh, social, uh, low social economic condition, right? So that's a people that we have to include in these uh, economic policies, Yeah, right? certainly. And because we have those more people, that also means we're going to see a greater benefit in the future. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, oh my God. <laughs> Obviously, if we invest yeah. those money, that might happen for sure. So but are you I'm making the argument that Sweden no, no, doesn't no, I, have wait, the money? No, no, let, me finish, let me finish. No, but you, you, you want to invest in these people that come from so, some poor socioeconomic condition. Well, I'm saying, it, don't you think it's a much better investment to invest in people that come from uh, a higher socioeconomic conditions? To we, come we, we can do both, experience? and both of them are positive. Yeah, but why? Why would why would put the money in the l low social economic? Because when we because put the because money? that's still a positive. Because that will still have positive effects. Both of, of these course, investments will be positive. It wouldn't be comparable, right? Well, why does it matter if it's not comparable? They're both good. They will both increase the well-being and the, the welfare of Sweden as a whole. They will yeah, both yeah, make Sweden better, but to different but, extents. Yeah, but you still need to make a compare. Uh, still make make comparison, right? But they're both positive. Yeah, of course they're both positive. Okay, this would but be let's like this would be like, for example, like let's say you could like you could do okay. Let's say you you have like two different strategies and you're playing a football game. Okay, one right. of the strategies uh, will increase your chance of scoring by forty percent. 
And right. it's it's like a, some tiki taka shit. I don't fucking know. I don't play football. Right. And the second strategy is by training, a, doing a certain like shooting drill that will increase the the free kick. You know your free kick accuracy or whatever within football. Okay. Right. Now let's say that someone's like, oh, you know this tiki taka shit that that gives us forty percent higher like chance of scoring because we're able to like dribble past the defenders, while right. the free kick one just gives us twenty percent better. Why should we even do the free kick one? It's it's why why don't we do both? Yeah, yeah, of Even though they go to different extents, both, which is still the both. But 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 in your argument, you disregard that each uh, each uh, training that uh, uh, that requires to perform that uh, takes money into account, right? So we both need to invest money in both of those uh, in both of those training in both of those kinds of training, right? Yes. Right. So what would you? Okay. So what would we um, put all the money? Uh, into something that I didn't causes... say all the money. We're going to put the money into both of these different things because the policies are going to affect both groups positively. Right, right, both of these. But you still have a limited amount of tax money. Okay, so, so you you're have... making the argument that Sweden doesn't have enough money. No, I'm not making that argument. No, what I what I am arguing is is that um, is that uh, uh, no matter how much tax money you make, uh, you still you you regardless of how much tax money you have. You have you still have to make the right investment uh, in order to get the most benefit from that money. But both of the investments are positive, and we have enough money for both. Yeah. Okay. So you think that importing X amount of people from the MENA countries, uh, no, importing X amount of people from the MENA countries uh, okay. with a fixed amount of money, and right. and importing uh, a Y amount of people from uh, it's not possible, but from uh, like uh, from Nordic Sweden, even okay. though that's not possible, uh, let's assume that we can. You think okay. that investing the money in the men of people will result in more uh, be, uh, in more uh, uh, more benefit, uh, make a, make up for a bigger bigger um, uh, bigger result in investment than importing from Nordic countries? Okay, two things here. Number one, like I've said. I don't know how many times we can do both. And number okay, two, so... it's not necessarily as simple. The type of investment you need to give towards people that already come from developed nations, for example, that are already, for example, within more like higher skill laborers, they will often need more intensive, more heavy, more like expensive per capita training in order to increase their, you know, what's it called, economic productivity relative to people that come from a worse like level of economic productivity. So per capita, I would probably say that like the investment is probably even better for the, you know, for the, um, for the, for the migrant groups. But either way, it doesn't matter. This discussion is relevant because we, we just have the money to do both of them. What are you... <laughs> Like so, you don't think that there's a limited amount of tax money that? Uh, so, we, are you we, saying that we don't have enough money? Oh my God, I mean, going in circle. <laughs> you just ah. Uh... I understand what you're saying. You're you're making the the assertion that we will get more bang for our buck. Our money will produce more value investing right. in people from more developed countries than investing in people from less developed countries, correct? Right. Okay, I perfectly understand that. My question right. is, if we have the money for both of them, which you agree with, because you, I've asked you like twice if Sweden has enough, if, if you think Sweden doesn't have enough money, and you've said no, if we have enough money to invest in both of them, why don't we invest in both of them if both of them are going to be positive investments? Okay, so even, so... So you can't just invest all of that money into one of those. Uh, well, it's not yeah. that simple. A lot of the reforms are going to be beneficial for both of them. And on top of that, a lot of like the right, like even even if we like even if we invest zero in the developed group of people, let's say, even if we invest all of the money in the less developed one, that will still benefit the developed labor force. Why will it benefit the developed labor force? OK, because if you have a larger sort of base of labor which most likely is going to be maybe a low skill or medium skill labor what that's going to do is it's going to allow more people with high skill labor training to take more positions of leadership to take more managerial positions to lead firms to be in like yeah, to, to basically attain a, a better like career like qualification so these are like mutual it's not one or the other both of them help each other and it's very very complicated but we have the money for both of them and it's generally just like positive investment all around 
Yeah, okay. But uh, you don't think that there is a, a low skill labor force that are preferable to uh, people from the MENA countries? But why not do both? And then we also have the, the, no, 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 the ethical okay, so, considerations. Okay, fine. okay, so let's just say that I accept your premise for a moment. Okay. Um, but uh, okay, so why 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 is the why is the people from the MENA countries that are here right now yeah. preferable in order uh, in instead of uh, um, ac uh, like accepting immigrants from rest of Europe or from other countries that like from richer countries, but that still has a uh, a culture that more resonate with ours, a more uh, social okay. economic this might... that more resonates with ours. Unironically, previous to this conversation, or like just generally, I I, I was I, I was a bit confused as to why people tend to use like imported as a, a stand-in for like accepting immigrants. Uh, but now I understand why, because the way you seem to think that this works is that Sweden like like pays money or advertises or like picks a select group of people to come to Sweden to work within Sweden to do yada yada yada. The reason why we have all these people from many countries is not because we pick them from those regions it's because right. they are the ones that have a high demand for entering sweden people like laborers especially yeah, high skill laborers course. around europe right now there isn't as high of a demand for them to, into, to come into sweden and the ones that want to go into sweden they just can't go into sweden there's no issues with that and there have never been any issues from that but despite the fact that immigration has been super 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 easy for people that are living within the Euro within europe especially within the european union right now for decades and decades and decades we still see that we have issues with, for example, the amount of labor force we have in the welfare system. Mm, I'm not really sure if I if it's if it's reasonable to consider that. I mean, it's still. I mean, especially since most of the people come from um, come from are like you know war refugees. It's not like these people are uh, like uh, uh, they came here for the reason that they wanted to work, right? Well, no, but. That's not important now that they are here. They should work, and we should give them the opportunities yeah, to be able to work. Yeah, obviously. But yeah. if you if you let's, let's say that we have would have, would have, let's say that uh, that the Middle East would have been peaceful instead through the entire twentieth century. Okay. Then, yeah. So uh, why, why are we considering so this that, this other hypothetical? Yeah, okay, so, so I don't so know what that, so, this has been. Okay. Let's uh, let's let, let's assume that for a moment, and then okay. let's say that okay, the reason that. Okay, so let's say that for some reason the economic conditions would be like you know similar okay. to you know uh, to know uh, um, as the other now, but without the war. So okay. now people now people can still uh, migrate to to Sweden, but without the without the uh, without being forced from a war. You know. Yeah. So now the, we have economic. So now we have an, an economic incentive for people to migrate instead of like a forced instead of like they, they being like a forced incentive. But well, we 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 clearly don't have those economic incentives, right? Because otherwise, we would see right now a like a swath of people coming from different parts of Europe in order to fill that five hundred thousand people gap we have within the welfare sector. But you say it yourself that we don't accept any immigrants as of now. No, we generally like it's we, we, well, except for like COVID regulations, borders have been like pr completely open for like EU residents for like having like imposing restrictions among immigration from EU countries is 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 extremely difficult and has, to my knowledge, not occurred as like it's possible that it's occurred for a small period of time now during COVID. Yes, but like previously that we have not in any way impeded the ability for people within the EU to come to Sweden. Yeah, but I'm not necessarily talking about you. I'm talking about the other countries, including the many countries. But uh, but they but in this case they aren't forced by they're forced to leave the countries by war, and they're not forced to like like a ton of, like like over uh, for example like. Uh, um, well, for for the Syrians, I was like one hundred eighty thousand people coming at once, you know. But instead, they they can they can come in like in the in the, in like a pace that is more uh, reasonable for 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 us uh, for us to assimilate with them. Wouldn't that be a lot more preferable than having people to come here from the from like a war? Unfortunately, we don't live in a world without war. Oh yeah, obviously. Of so course. So I don't see what the point of this hypothetical is. Okay, so uh, ov like, <laughs> yeah, um, all right, okay, fine, um, but I I don't see how people who comes from a war 
are uh, coming for uh, actually coming for economic sentences incentives well i'm not saying they come here for well yeah i mean they do come here for economic incentives right because the econo yeah, economic yeah, like, like opportunities in sweden are a whole lot better yeah. than wherever they came from right yeah but they're not coming from the center that uh like working yeah, but is it, the first it priority <laughs> it doesn't matter okay let's let's zoom out because we we've gone like way too far into this okay you brought okay. up like deportations okay and i right. talked about things like for example the ethical considerations of just you know making it far more difficult for these people to live in a safe place we talk yeah, we about can, we can, okay but uh, i can just uh, put in the, you got that we can talk about this ethical incentive for but for the for the uh, the purpose of the discussion um i don't care about that at all and we can we can discuss it if you want to but i don't really care about the ethical incentive all right okay. uh, i'm not surprised uh the second part would be the the cost aspect of it the logistical things that I, that could come with this um the the cost of deporting people in the example you talked about by just revoking their visas the potential for for example a swath of like illegal immigrants remaining here in sweden which would be negative for our economy and just generally for like you know a bunch of other different aspects within just society as a whole which should be something that I, I i wouldn't expect for a um somebody concerned with immigration to argue for a policy that's going to increase the amount of illegal immigrants but i suppose here we are um the third one is the fact that through not taking advantage of the massive new labor pool we have right here in sweden through not improving the infrastructure systems we're losing out on a massive amount of benefits when it comes to economics when it comes to our welfare sector when it comes to just a million and one different aspects if we if we try to remove these people from our countries and the final part is that we need a massive 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 labor market resource infusion uh within the next you know within this decade and it's just incredibly 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 difficult to be able to uh to uh to gather that amount of workforce um and that's why you know because we already have to some extent a great amount of like labor infusion through immigration which we can put to use then that's going to compensate for the issues we face within welfare employment um so those are the reasons why deportations are bad and i still haven't been able to get into the uh my solution for it i've just been critiquing yours but uh but yeah, so no, I also have solution for it. By the way, we can go. Wasn't your topic. solution like revoking the visas? No, for like for the migrants who actually who actually has a reason to stay here. Okay, what do you mean by reason to stay? So reason to stay if it would be like if they're actually a, like an ongoing war in their countries, you know, the ongoing war in countries. Well, obviously they can't go back in an ongoing war, you know. That's okay. one of the reason. Okay. Um, that that would be a reason to stay. Another reason to say would well, if they are actually if they actually are working, they actually are seeking job, if they actually are capable of doing that, well, obviously, then the, we will want to stay, right? Uh, so anyway, so these people uh, are still going to need some kind of assimil assimilation. Oh, you want to talk about this? You want me to continue? Um, <laughs> let's just, okay, if you're not in favor of the revoking of visas, um, which I understand why you wouldn't be, because it's a bad policy uh then number one i'm unsure why that was even brought up but also number two uh let's 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 move on from that then what are your what are your solutions to this problem well okay so there's this guy called mustafa panshir you know about them no so basically this is a, a guy from afghanistan he was a police officer for several years and uh, to my knowledge and according to him uh, mm -hmm. he was the only police officer officer uh, from afghanistan for many many years since we didn't until he quit because he quit in the tour to immigration work uh, among uh, his uh, uh, countrymen mm -hmm. that come from afghanistan yep. so basically he done a lot of um, lectures where he educate people about swedish culture okay Essentially, you educate young people to an out of fit in in Sweden, and that is a tremendously good work that he's doing. So, do you think the solution to the massive issues we face in integration with Sweden is by sending around lecturers to communities to talk about Swedish culture? In part, yes. Okay. In part, yes. All right. Because I think that's uh, because I think that really solves the issue with you know being able to um, fit into. Uh, the societal norms that is Sweden. So, for example, you you heard you know about the saying uh, uh, education doesn't give job, contacts give job. Um, I, I, I it seems to make sense, but uh, no, I'm not familiar with the saying specifically. 
Okay, so that could that could be what that that could be like one incentive to you know uh, no, no, that could be one how would you put it um, way that this would work you know because if you make sure that these people uh, that the the Afghans could um, assimilate property into Swedish culture, then they're surely gonna make you know more friends, uh, more work contacts, and uh, in general. Uh, be better off in this in be, be better off in Sweden. Simple okay. as that. So let's okay. Let's talk about this for example. Um, like instilling values or whatever. Um, right. Wouldn't you say that a perhaps a much more effective way to do this that would m- number one require less resources. Number two bring out about a bunch of other positive effects when it comes to their ability for you know like migrant groups for example to take jobs and stuff like that. Wouldn't a much better solution to this be to like reform our educational systems and just teach progressive values in general in school? No, because I don't think values should be taught in school. Okay, what do you think is being taught when you talk about Swedish culture? Do you not think that's values? Yeah, I do. But we, but I separate, but but I separate um, people who are born here or people who are moved here, no matter uh, who they are, no matter who they come from, Nordic countries, no matter who come from other countries. I separate people who are born here uh, from people who uh, move here. That's how I, that's how I do. Okay, so Maybe what does that have to do with it? Okay, what's the Maybe meaningful sure. difference between like like people like private förelasare coming to different communities and talking about Swedish culture versus having an educational system which teaches about the general like the the like laws in Sweden and general progressive values and attitudes we have in, for example, social studies and stuff like that. Why do you think the first is better than than the second? Because that is the first of people that actually moved here. Okay, and well, why reason- shouldn't we have that education in general, just in, in school as a whole? Because I don't think that people that are born here should be forced, should be uh, have values forced upon them. If you're moved here, that's a different, different that's that's a different problem. Okay, I see what you mean now. Okay, right, <laughs> all right. So you're you're okay with with? Okay, hold on. Oof. This went a different direction than I thought it would. Okay. Um, so if we argue from, okay, but we teach like values, we teach general cultural attitudes and stuff like that in school, like literally all the time. There is, it's practically impossible to form an educational system that doesn't inspire some degree of like values or some degree of like cultural attitudes within the people that take those educational classes. Like for yeah, example, well, just from my, and I'm sure you as well, when we talk yes, about just our experience yes. within the Swedish educational system or within other educational systems, I have like a, 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 like a, I've lived in a lot of different countries. I've lived in Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, Singapore, Spain, and whichever educational system I've was, I've gone to public schools and private schools. There is still a degree of values education inherent to educational programs within schools and this is yeah, absolutely definitely the case yeah, yeah so, obviously because yeah. like the, 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 like some some values obviously gonna be taught automatically like uh-huh. if you if you, if you teach people about different religions and obviously uh, we are taught that different lig- different religions are just that different religions we don't incentivize mm-hmm. other like oh but this religion is better than another or religion is bad in general mm-hmm. you know so obviously yep. there's a value incentive there but yep. what he's doing here is he's talking about actual um Actual politics, this uh, social economic culture, like, like in here in Sweden, it's actually okay uh, uh, to be gay, and nobody should be uh, uh, attacked for that. For example, oh, so are you, are you talking about stuff like, for example, like the in, the two year integration system we have set up right now in Sweden for uh, newly arrived immigrants? Oh, but uh, is so is that is that really taught in extent in the extensive way that is that you perceive here? Uh, no, it is not enough. This two-year system is absolutely not enough, and that's why one of the policy points I have within my document is to absolutely invest and improve and expand the capabilities and the educational curriculums within these two-year programs. Okay, so I don't agree with it. I think it's a very this problem. Then in that case, it's probably a very good policy. However, I don't see why it's a point of having migrants here that aren't like right now they aren't uh, really doing doing anything while not being educated enough. Okay, but now we're switching the argument again. So I asked you for your solutions to the problem, and you brought yeah, up. Yeah, 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 but this is a solution. I, I, like, uh, this is an, it's so, an Okay, so, so the first solution is encompassed an within my set of progressive opinions. And in my opinion, in a lot of, like, a lot better way, because this is going to be something that's, like, publicly run. So it's going to be accessible to everybody. And it's not going to be just, like, private people going around holding lectures to all these uh, different, you know, people. There's going to be more transparency. There's going to be more accountability if it's sure. run somewhat publicly. So sure. if anything, my, like, policy is just an experience expansion upon what you already said in a way sure. that's more comprehensive and a lot better. Okay, that's sure. one of your policy proposals. What's, what's, what's your right. second one? What, 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 what further ones do you have? 
Uh, no, that was one. That was just one solution. I don't. So uh, what, what other ones do you have? How do you, how do you solve this issue? No, that that was the only one I had. I, like I, I so you I, only like have I said, one solution to this problem. Yes, but I don't, because I don't really care about uh, solution in that way. Ah, okay. So this is yeah. okay. Wonderful. Yeah, but so because, like my my issue is that like, like and I've said this. I'm gonna try to uh, uh, try to hint to this from the beginning. Like I don't really care what the issue might be. Uh, as, you just uh, want these people out of your country. <laughs> if you make it sound like that, like holy shit, talk about putting words in other people's mouth. Well, I'm asking you. See, this is the same thing. You won't get to what you actually believe. You've given me one, like, it's not even a policy proposal. It's talking about some one private actor that does a thing. I ask you yeah, what your yeah, solution to yeah, You can have a very, very strong it's opinion a good about example, it. Right? You don't think it's a good example? Uh, well, it could be a lot better, and that's why it's already encompassed within my list of policy suggestions. Yeah, but then when I, I ask you, like, what's your solution you to that problem? part? Okay, so part. What, what do we do about this problem? If you were in government right now, what would you do? Go. Oh my god! In regards to solving Im 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 like issues of immigration, because you clearly have a very strong opinion about it, so I'm just like curious. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, I would uh, let people that doesn't seem to ha seems to be doing uh, doesn't seem to be doing well, like seems not be dragging uh, their own weight uh, as naming it to people. I wouldn't want them to be in our in our country. So, what would you, would you deport them? Would you revoke their citizenship? Uh, I would. Uh, well, first I would say, well, is there, is there, is there, is there, well, of course, there's a risk to everything, but is the risk small enough that they doesn't seem to be um, uh, any any damage to society? Well, in that case, I could revoke it, sure. Okay, so uh, you are in favor, of basically, like your your solutions. Okay, so this this is this is I've talked about this on a number of occasions. This is sort of the right wing sort of like I suppose like agenda or just general plan when it comes to immigration. Okay, it's number one: relentlessly critique symptoms of poor infrastructure, poor socioeconomic structures within Sweden, and right. orient them from an immigrant-like oriented perspective. Say that, oh, we need to close the borders immediately. We can't deal with this like level of immigration. It's not going to work. What happens? Right. We already passed that step. We've already like practically had like ex extremely little, little immigration for the past four years. What happens right. then? The problems don't get solved. Hmm. Wonder why you haven't addressed the root cause of the issue. What the right wing agenda is then to be like, okay, well, it seems like this issues still aren't really working. Then you prescribe a number of just completely like like ineffective, not enough solutions, like having like going around having private lectures in this community about respecting Swedish culture or whatever. What yeah, happens but the, then? Okay, well, even if you pass that policy, the, oh, yeah, okay. even if you pass the policy, still is enough. It's not going to solve the issue. No shit. You still haven't addressed the root cause. What's the then like what's going to happen then eventually is you're just going to be like, well, fuck it. It seems to be just an issue with these people inherently. Okay. And then you do the yeah. types of policies that you're talking about. You just revoke their citizenship. You deport them. You just want to get them out of here. And yeah, that's right. my issue because there is so many other good policies that we can enact in order to be both, you know, I know you just completely dismissed this and I understand why now, to be both, to act in a in a more moral way, in my opinion, to make the economy of Sweden stronger, to make the infrastructure of Sweden stronger, to be able to solve massive issues we have right now with within regard to welfare, to use this as an opportunity to pass a whole lot of other policies that are also far overdue in Sweden, and to do all these different things. And instead, all this is to you, all this, this discourse around these and all these policy proposals to you, all it is is just, I, I, I don't like these people, just, just like, don't give them the opportunities to succeed, and then when they don't succeed, just get them out. Okay, but the, okay, for right now we're talking about people, uh, the people that aren't doing crime, right? <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, I'm talking about all immigrant groups. Um, what do you mean? Also, I mean, all, what do you mean all immigrant groups? I'm, I'm saying that my the policy proposals I have, the progressive policies we have in order to solve this issue, would help both, you know, offending immigrants and also non-criminal immigrants. And it would reduce the, crim the crime rate, it would increase employment, it would increase well-being, it would increase their ability to move around Sweden and take whatever yeah, jobs they want. Yeah, but this doesn't happen over, over a day. Yeah, no shit. That's why we need to make these investments now. 
with a series of like like some of these are short term like for example legalizing cannabis will just absolutely like limit the ability yeah, yeah, for know, criminal know, gangs to for example cannabis. like form gangs and to reduce the incentive for criminal activity stuff like for example general improvement of integration fairly direct wage subsidies fairly direct expansion of arbits for million fairly direct um things like follow-ups fairly direct credential translation fairly correct and then we have some more long-term ones like for example housing and the renationalization of, uh, of, of education discussing things like regarding Regarding, um, like market discrimination from immigrant groups, like their long-term solutions and then their short-term solutions. And that's yeah, how but, you solve the problem. Yeah, obviously. But do you think that uh, these, 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 uh, these uh, budgets comparison, these budget investments are comparable? What does that have to do with anything? Like to well, actually invest in all these policies. Okay, I mean, that, that, I'm going to ask I mean, you for the fourth time. Do you think a... we don't have enough money to pass the policies I just listed to you? Yeah, I do think we have enough money. To okay, do that. so then what's the issue? Yeah, the issue is that I think that that th those money, for example, they c could be invested in the better places, for example. Okay, like I'm gonna. Do you think we could both invest in the series of things like I talk about here and see things like, for example, a mass decrease in criminality, a mass expansion of our economy, a mass decrease in unemployment, a mass increase in general level of education, and do all this and at the same time have enough money for whatever places you think it would be like better allocated in? Because I, no, I, I don't. You don't think we'd have enough money for both of them? No. Okay, what type of policies do you have as an alternative that are so much better than, and that will bring up so much like better benefits than what I just listed? So, okay. So, for example, uh, uh, um, the, what was it called? The, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, Fuck, yeah. man, I'm no blanking. Um, uh, hospitals. Um, hospitals. What's it called? <laughs> Can help me here. What's it called, man? Welfare. I don't know. Uh, yeah, welfare. Okay. Yeah, like in welfare. general, general welfare and in general. Um, um, man, what's it called? What? Yeah, welfare. <laughs> just general social system, social benefits, yeah, social so, security, social, so, social system. Uh, hosp like a hospital. What's yep, it called? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stuff like that. You know. Yep. Definitely. Okay. So what the primary issue we have right now in regards to edu uh, in regards to like for example hospitals in Sweden and welfare in Sweden is a lack yeah. of labor force it's not a lack of funding necessarily both of them are issues but wait, the lack of labor wait, force wait, wait. is a considerably stronger one and the best wait. thing is with the policies i've listed we're going to see a great amount of increase in tax revenue generated through new economic activity and we can just throw this money we can just like sprinkle it on the welfare sector that's yeah, but we if we do. spend, if we if we give if we give more salary to people who are working in the the uh, in hospitals, yep, then sure, then surely more people would want to work there, right? Um, okay, so here's the thing: we ha we need five hundred thousand people. Okay, the only way we would be able to fill that five hundred thousand pe person gap without the need for immigration would be if literally every single person stepping into the workforce from 2019 to 2021, uh, sorry, to 2028, they were native born, all went directly to welfare. No McDonald's, no other business types, no sports, nothing. If every single native born person who entered the workforce be between those years will go into the welfare, that's the only way by which we would be able to fill these gap in a meaningful capacity. Yeah, I don't really see how you could bring in those people from other nations that aren't... But we, already, uh, we don't need to bring in these people. They're already here. We have a bunch of people here that need jobs, that need opportunities. And through yeah. educating them and providing them with housing all across Sweden in, for example, areas where, let's say, we need more help within the, uh, within the welfare sector, within a hospital, what you will see is you will see a gravitation towards those sectors by immigrant groups. You will have a labor market infusion, which is very, very important and is very, very necessary. Yeah, sure. But I mean, we could, just, we could just at least, at least we could uh, just as like, uh, just, just as well take in these people from other nations that already are educated. Like, like it's like an investment you want to educate these people i mean that's completely fine right we educate them and the general swedish population to a higher degree and reducing segregation yeah, and reducing is, unemployment yeah, and doing like a million other like downstream effects or we yeah, can allocate is, okay. our money less efficiently 
Yeah. Okay. Th and this just, is why I don't think, uh, agree with you. The, uh, fundamental level that this would somehow uh, not be that much of a more investment. It would be uh, a less less efficient investment. Less efficient investment than taking in older educated people from other countries. Yes, definitely, because you need more resources per capita to attract a already high skill, already developed worker to Sweden than it's going to take per capita to educate somebody already within Sweden to work within the welfare sector. Wait, so you don't care about the you don't care about actually raising salaries as they are right now? No, we should do that as well, definitely. But it's not going to be enough. Oh, wait, no, no, no. The country is like add, like add, like no, we should raise uh, raise the salary and just add. Like you can't have the cake and eat it too. Like. It sounds to me that you want to spend like a shit ton of more money that is actually Damn possible. right. I want good Keynesian economic reform within Sweden because what we've been doing for the past few decades is nothing but privatizing and privatizing and privatizing. It's time we went in the other goddamn direction. All right. Okay. Okay. So so we we just well, so okay. So you you want to like spend more money that is that it seems to be efficient to actually do with taking in people from other country while still uh, maintain while still wanna you know uh, having. Um, a high salary among uh, hospital workers. Yeah, yes, I, I want to do both of these. Both of these are very important. The key issue, the right now biggest issue for welfare is the lack of people within the lack of labor. And a more yes. efficient investment in order to solve that problem would be investments in education for the already existing labor force rather than using that money to attract workers from other nations to come here. We were going to be able to get more laborers into the welfare sector with the same money if we invested in domestic education and that's just if we like like target really slightly on this specific issue of welfare because the type of investment i'm talking about that is going to both improve employment within welfare but also do all these other things like increasing overall and decreasing overall unemployment increasing overall economic productivity decreasing overall crime rates and doing like all these things as well my my type of investment is just like better in literally every single conceivable way the only like the only real like oh, other oh. benefit to the types of policies okay. you're talking about is that you just have like a less efficient allocation of resources, but I guess you have like less brown people within your country. Which I don't know. I I, I personally don't think that outweighs oh, all wait, the wait, other wait, benefits. Wait, no 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 wait. So so I mean I mean I, I don't really see uh, how the economics uh, like goes together here. I really don't see it. How how all the educated people could be less value to taking all the educated people could be less value than actually because educated. you need. Because you need to pay more because these people are in a better condition already because these people have good How incentives. How do you know that? Do you, okay, who do you think has better incentives? Who do you think is in a better socioeconomic condition? Other like laborers within the European Union as an aggregate or migrants within Sweden? Which has a, which has a more what? Which has a more? Wh which of them have like have have more of an incentive to start working within the welfare sector, and which of them are like fine as they are right now and don't really need to do so as much? Well, it, uh, well, it kind of depends on what situations uh, each person are, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. On an aggregate, that's typically how we talk about when we talk about large population groups. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, uh, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, like uh, if people really can't, um, like if people really um, have, like if people have an, uh, if people have an incentive to educate yourself, and um, uh, if people have an incentive to educate yourself and um, uh, and and work with, with the welfare force, then, then sure, that is that is all good and it's all good and dandy. Okay. But but that, that will still require. So you don't think that that will still, you don't think that that will require uh, uh, more money invested than people who are come from a European nation who work in Sweden. Okay, we're we're going. I'm gonna get, do two more points here, and then I I think we're we're gonna wrap up because we're just going in circles. So number one, the All argument right. I'm, if we're if we're hyper focusing on specifically the effect on the welfare sector here in Sweden. I'm mean, at three points right. actually. Then what we will see is that if you spend a million kroner trying to attract foreign workers to come mm -hmm. here to Sweden, other mm -hmm. like workers from the EU to come here in Sweden, or you mm -hmm. spend one million kroner to try to get existing labor within Sweden to come work within welfare, when with that same investment, you will be able to attract more people from your already existing labor pool to come work to work within welfare than you will 
people within the other European Union. That's point number one. Point number two is that the investment of spending that million on already existing labor in Sweden is that that will also bring a bunch of other benefits to Sweden that the other one will not. It will bring benefits in economics, in criminal behavior, in segregation, in housing, in general educational attainment, in employment, in all those things. And those are things that will not be achieved with your level of investment. And the third thing is that the type of investment I'm proposing, the investment within educational systems, for example, within Sweden, are already long overdue and is an investment we should make anyway, regardless of whether or not we have migrants or not. Okay, so, so first, overall, I... the risk, the cost benefit analysis sways heavily in the favor of my um, my like investment strategy here. Okay, first of all, I agree with your last point. But back to your first point, that the, uh, I mean, if you invest that money, that will that will result in a higher uh, that will result in uh, higher salaries within the uh, within the hospitals, right? Which will that, also be that's, more expensive. That's, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, but we, we do want to invest money in. Uh, in the hospital workers, right? Don't yeah, they? sure, but it will be, but like at number one, like attracting foreign workers and also having like super high pay is probably going to be a more like a less efficient investment than doing both of that with existing labor anyway, on top of the other two things I talked about, which are sort of like modifiers to the thing as a whole. Yeah, but yeah, sh yeah, sure, but <laughs> it's like you're disregarding the, the, uh, it's like you're disregarding the need for pay among the, uh, among the hospital workers, the need for higher salary among the hospital. That's we what should, it we absolutely, be. we can absolutely do that as well with no issues. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't really follow how. Okay, so your uh, argument then is that we don't have enough money. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's my argument. Okay, Fine. god damn it, we wasted like two hours, and we came back at a like a question I asked you like two hours ago. Anyway, so we wasted all the time discussing something you didn't even really believe. Jesus okay. Christ. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So all right. Okay. Fine. I, <laughs> I want to believe that. Sure. Uh, if you want to believe that, that was the, my point of being. Then sure. Fine. All right. I can okay. Um, we we didn't even get to the other points you thought I was being uncharitable towards our foreigner on. We just got to the first one, and then we just kind of like left it at that. But you know what? It's it's all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this discussion uh, short here. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much for for coming on. Anyway, it was a nice brain massage. Yeah, if uh, yeah, if you wanna fight again someday, I don't know uh, maybe it's a uh, rough discussion. So I wanna wanna definitely come up again. All right, I'll also uh, send you the link to the document I was talking about if you want to be just generally like have more information and be more informed on a lot of the policy proposals detailed within this. If you want to have a larger, you know, base of solutions than just hey, you know private lecturers coming around, then I, I would recommend you read that document. Um, but uh, but yeah, all right. Have a have a nice rest of your evening. All right. So wait, wait, wait. is this document um, the one that you posted on your Anger Fornia video? Uh, it may have been the one I was referring to during the video, yes. All right. OK, then I think so. I think I already did most of it. All right. All right, then. All right. Have a nice evening. All right. Goodbye. Bye bye. Ah, uh, <laughs> I swear to God. Oh. Ah. I knew that was the issue. I knew it was. That's why I asked him so many times. Do you think we don't have enough money? No, no, no. And then we, we got to the corner. I was like, do you think we don't have enough money? Well, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Ah, oh, bro. Oh. oh, my God. I swear to God, I wanted to have the discussion of whether or not we had enough money. That's why I kept trying to ask, hey, do we have enough? Hey, do you think we don't have enough money? Do you think we don't have enough money? Do you think we don't have enough money? And we just we just didn't answer. We just didn't answer. We just didn't answer. And until we got to the very end. At this point, we've already been talking for way too long. And it's 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 too late to bring in a new facet to the discussion. Oh, my God.